Hello there is another wonderful edition of your program, Project Nigeria. Uh, today on the program, we are with someone, my guest, uh, you are going to be meeting her very, very, very soon. Uh, I would use the word that she has seen it, she has seen all that uh, civil service can actually bring. She has risen to the position of a permanent secretary in the Nigerian civil service. Uh, my name is First Jose Jiroga Nefifen. I, I will be your anchor through this program. We'll go for a short break. When we come back, we'll be meeting our guest. Don't go away. You are welcome back. I'm talking of no other person than Mrs. Ibuku Odusote. Ma, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, who is Mrs. Ibuku Oluwa Odusote? Um, a mother, um, a daughter, um, a wife, I'm a pastor, I'm a teacher, I'm a mentor. I'm also a mentee, and um, I just live my life freely, more than anything else. I, I serve God in the government of Nigeria. Now, the journey so far, so what, what took you into the public service? When it is, is it accidental or you just chose it? I, I, I will tell you that I didn't quite choose it. Because I thought I was going to be in the banking sector when I first graduated from the university. By the way, I graduated in 1981, uh, not too long ago. And I, I thought I was going to be in the banking sector. I loved uh, the machines banking when it all started. But um, it didn't end up that way for me. I felt I needed a master's degree, so I was at the University of Lagos where I, I got myself a master's in computer science and I started academics. I, I felt that I was going to make a career out of academics and then I, I, right there I, I got invited to the private sector because I was in Shell, a petroleum development company for a while as a, a trainee manager for IT people. Actually, my background is in information communications technology. Uh, I'm a software developer, so you would expect that I'm going to be thinking uh, logistics, network analysis, and things like that. I, I got uh, away from Shell and still came back to the university for a master's degree I ended up settling in the university to, to, to lecture. I also had some um, overtures at um, organizations, international organizations. Actually, one year I, I had a sabbatical with the British Council. And at the British Council, uh, a number of things happened there that necessitated my participating in an international program uh, which held in um, Ghana, Accra, Ghana at that time. And that exposed me to some needs in the Nigerian system that we were lagging behind concerning information technology and penetration of IT in Nigeria at that time, uh, particularly uh, internet and related matters, networking and things like that. Worked with a number of people. Somewhere along the line was when someone in Nigerian government, uh, a minister at that time, who felt that I could have some contributions to Nigerian government, that I should come and help uh, in, the, in a particular uh, ministry. And I was invited to come. I came. I must tell you it was quite frustrating coming into uh, the system at that time. But I was glad that I was not actually taking anybody's position. What I was actually doing was introducing what was very important to the system. So we're talking about internet, we're talking about connectivity, we're talking about things that were strange to the, the, the civil service at that time. So in 1999, when 
uh, the administration, Obasanjo administration came in, uh, I was invited to come to help in, in installing some um, software systems and whatever it is that we can do to help the government. That was how I actually got into uh, civil service. Uh, otherwise, I would just have been in public service. I would have been my lecturer and academic, and I would probably be back to the University of Lagos where I thought I was doing what I love to do best. Civil service, if you ask me, there's this bureaucratic bottleneck that is always the, something that can take you one minute. I don't know. Civil servant will want it to take you three, five, seven days. They tell you they are following due process. Like you said, in, in, in all sincerity, how were they able to slow you down to mm -hmm. their own pace? Uh, I, I don't think I got slowed down. What I tried to do was to bring them up to my speed in a number of ways. It is true that there are certain things that I would have handled in another way if I'm in another environment. Initially when I came, I felt, oh yes, we needed the speed, you must do this, you must do this on time. But I discovered that there's a lot of sense in bureaucracy. There's a lot of order in bureaucracy that if you follow the rules, uh, there's no time that you would uh, fall foul of the laws. If you want to rush to get things done, like um, I mean, in the in the on campus, I, I can sign a paper on the corridor. I can just ask you to hold the paper for me. I can read it quickly and just get it signed because it doesn't really have much of commitment. Uh, there's nothing so serious about it. I'm probably just looking at somebody's results or somebody's this and that. And as much as possible, just check the basic things and you know it's fine, you can do it. But you won't do that in service. Because if I put my signature on something, I must be able to stand by it even over the years, whatever it is that happens. So I wouldn't be able to. So you want to be sure it follows due process. But due process does not mean elongated time. Due process does not mean delay. Due process just means that it follows the rules and that you make sure that it is done at the appropriate time that it needs to be done. When someone writes up something and gives it to you, writes up a document and gives it to you, you know that you have a responsibility to check before that is endorsed upwards. Because the moment it's endorsed upwards, you take responsibility for the totality of that document. So that's why uh, I wouldn't say that civil service slowed me down. Civil service has trained me to be more courteous, to be more, uh, to be thorough in looking at the things that I'm doing a lot more than I ever had looked at them. And then civil service also t uh, tames you and gives you some level of discipline in handling matters. So you, don't, you just don't speak anyhow. You want to be sure of what you're saying so that you can back up your word with facts and figures. We'll, we'll go for a short break. And when we come back, we'll go into another area that uh, I know you have been actually itching you what you, you want to hear. Don't go away. You are welcome back. She is a permanent secretary, and I know you were wondering that how did she get there? And at the beginning, she told us that she she's a teacher, a mentor, a mentee, a minister of God, everything you can think about. Now, has there been any time you felt like going back, having served outside this country, where the system is in place for you to just fit in? So has there been any time there were regrets and you felt like, oh, let me just leave this country and do my thing and just go? Has there been any time like that? Oh, of course, so many times. So many times. Maybe even yesterday. <laughs> as bad as that. But um, 
why you wouldn't find me going away is because uh, there's there's a word that brought me into this system. Um, like I mentioned, uh, a number of people have different um, things that drive them. But what drives me is the word of God. I know that when I came into Abuja, the Lord said, go, I will prosper you there. I didn't have understanding of it when I heard that word. But I've seen that unfold on a daily basis. Um, many times I had felt that, what was I doing here? I was in a place where I was very comfortable. I was uh, the pride of the place. I was uh, a bride that everybody was uh, trying to be suited to. I was doing what was unique. I was the first person on the internet in this country. I say that boldly. The first internet thing came on my system. I was collecting and generating emails for people when people didn't know anything about the internet and Lagos was it. That was where it was happening. And I was coming into Abuja, into civil service where nothing was happening. But uh, God wouldn't let me go. So I stayed here. And in staying here, I found on a daily basis wisdom in communicating the knowledge that we have to the environment that we have. And I can see a lot of changes uh, on, in various places all over in the service. So that I hadn't been discouraged is a lie. Yes, I had been discouraged a number of times that I would have preferred to be somewhere else. But I'm here because this is where God says I should be. And I'm happy to be here. You are a permanent secretary. What does the permanent secretary do? Is he a secretary that is permanent in an office? As a permanent secretary, what do I do? A permanent secretary is the chief administrative officer in an office. You are also the chief accounting officer. That means that the, the funds that are released to the organization, wherever we are, any MDA, where permanent secretaries are, you are in charge of those funds. You have to be able to account for every single penny that comes into such organizations. Because of uh, being the chief administrative officer, it means that the human resources, you are also in charge. You are supposed to check the organization to know that you have adequate manpower uh, manning levels, that you have proper establishment, that you do your budgeting and you make sure that you uh, place people appropriately into the functions that they should carry out and you obey instructions of your boss who will be the chief executive officer that's the ceo normally in ministries the ceo will be the honorable minister uh, but in an environment like where i am right now the secretary to the government of the federation is the chief executive officer so it means he gives directions and we follow it would say this is the, the policy line that we are going to walk in and then we make sure that we translate his vision into action and then it brings results in in the country. The last diaspora day celebration you, you were you were in the center of activity. First, how would you describe that program? Did it meet up to the expectation? Now that's number one. Then number two is there a diaspora commission coming up somewhere anytime soon? Mm. Okay, um, the diaspora day, that was going to be my first experience of running diaspora day. I found it quite uh, fulfilling. The reason is that we had a target, we had a goal, and we were able to achieve our objectives. Uh, we set up our deliverables and to a lot of extent, maybe like 90%, we were able to get our deliverables. So uh, I feel that if uh, the proper follow-up, the action plan is being uh, pursued, that it's, it's going to be a huge success talking about it in years to come. I know the program itself was a success. We enjoyed it, we liked it, but that's beyond uh, the the activity itself, the ceremonies, that the actions that follow, that's what will determine how really successful that outing was. Um, we, we talked a lot about the Diaspora Commission, which 
was supposed to have been passed into law by the last uh, National Assembly. And um, it's been approved there, but it has to be, it must have the consent of Mr. President. I can tell you, with the way things are right now in Nigeria, that wouldn't be priority to any president. Uh, I wouldn't even be too uh, anxious about getting that to happen. Reason being that the financial situation of Nigeria at this time requires caution. So apart from that, essentially, I would have said, uh, Mr. President will sign this into law and then we can start talking about creating a commission. We can't be talking about creating a commission right now with the way Nigeria is because creating any commission, no matter how minimal, we have worked it out. We know it's going to be very minimal in terms of financial uh, involvement, but that minimal financial implication is even still unaffordable at this time. So it may not come to be immediately, but it is going to be eventually because it's worth its while that there should be a diaspora commission. Is there an office where the, the, there is this interface between Nigeria and Nigeria, even if not a commission yet? Is there an office where they can come just bump in and say, oh, as I was driving to Kubwa, I saw something that uh, shouldn't be and I feel I have the expertise or we have the expertise to put this in place. You just note it down for somebody to be taking care, taking note of. Is there an interface like that for Nigerians in diaspora? Yes, please. That is this office. That's a function of this office. A department in this office handles that. The department of NNVS had, NNVS means Nigerian National Volunteer Service. That's where we put the diaspora uh, issues. Apart from this is a website that we have. So we are expecting also that people in diaspora would register on the website and register their competences because that also would help us. When we have issues, when we have uh, things that we want to look into, we get onto the website, onto our database, and then we can pick out some people that we can invite to bring out their knowledge along those lines. We, we have opened up quite a number of channels that enables uh, people in diaspora to be able to relate with us and to provide solutions that they have. You are a daughter, a wife, yes. a mother, uh, a pastor, yes. and a mentor. Everything you can think about. How do you blend this? How do you blend this? It's quite challenging. It is quite challenging. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier for a man to be in some of the positions that we ladies nowadays occupy than for a woman to do so. Because um, apart from doing all that you do in the office, you have a responsibility to be a mother, a wife, and that means you're a cook, you are a designer, you are a cleaner, you are a steward. You, you want to be sure that everything at home also runs well. So it's, it takes a lot of uh, time. It takes a lot of commitment to be able to get that done. I want to be able to work at 8 a.m., uh, but I have to run many schedules in the morning before I can get to work. The implication of that is that sometimes I wake up 2 a.m. to be able to keep to the challenge of all that I have to do. In one word, if you are to use one word, what is keeping you going? Where do you draw your, your inspiration and encouragement and any English word you can use? Where do you draw it from? I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping my God. Where the strength comes from, where grace flows from, is from the hands of the Almighty, the God of all flesh, the God in whom there is no God. When troubles come, and troubles have come, 
I've seen a lot of trouble in doing whatever it is that I'm doing. But when trouble comes, Jehovah stands for us and he just backs us up. He just opens a door that you really cannot understand what it's all about. But it's just God. Um, there's nowhere that we get into that life doesn't get there. It may be dull before we come. And people may feel that, oh, how come you are going here? But the moment we get there, life comes there. And that's because we draw strength from the Almighty. Young girls wants to be like you. What would you tell those young ones that look up to you? I tell them three things. The first thing is to, to know God. The second one is to have confidence in themselves that there is absolutely nothing that they cannot do. The third one is hard work. What is Mrs. Ibukun Oluwa Otishote planning after retirement? God giving us life. Amen. <laughs> Too many things. In fact, well, it's good to be in government, it's good to serve Nigeria, but I feel that I have so much out there to do. Well, my counseling is there, counseling people, that is, that is just a way of life. And in the midst of it, I know that God will bless me. I also have a farm. Thank God for Ministry of Agriculture. When I spent my time in agriculture, I came up with a number of farms, not just one. And so I farm different kinds of things. I'm farming fish. I'm farming chicken. I'm farming cassava. I'm producing gari. I'm producing, uh, I'm, well, I don't have a machine that produces um, cassava flour, but I'm supplying companies that produce cassava flour, so I'm generating cassava flour. I have intentions of export in oil palm. I have a, an oil palm farm that is coming up, still small. I like to just go and sit down and enjoy all this and enjoy myself. There's so much to do out there. I want to mentor many more young people, especially girls. Young marriages, making sure that they stand and they stand right. I want to preach the gospel uh, like I've never done before. So, so much to do. My, my children also want to have me. I have my siblings all over the world. I want to go visiting. I want to go on holidays, Disney World, anywhere. I know not that there's so much money, but God provides. And there will be opportunities for many things to get done. So I'm ready for retirement sincerely. And uh, let God just have his way. Yeah, it, it has been a good time with Mrs. Ibuku Oluwa Odishote. She's a permanent secretary political in uh, the office of the Secretary of the Government of the Federation. You heard it all. She's a mother, a teacher, a pastor, a wife, a doctor, all the things you can think about. And you know what? She also has time to counsel others. So you, you can imagine combining all this. There are a few key points that you should note. Civil service follow due process, but not necessarily wasting time and uh, when you come in when they groom you you would enjoy it they make things uh, move that is the much we can take today on the program project nigeria I, I i hope you enjoyed yourself next edition will be a superb one it's going to be very very wonderful don't go just keep a date with us again don't forget my name is festus and i'll be signing off here thank you very much